Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at the online video editor called WeVideo and I'll be giving you a quick introduction on how to get started editing videos inside of WeVideo. So you're going to navigate to WeVideo.com. Once you get here, you're going to look for the Google icon, which is the white G in the red circle, and we're going to go ahead and click that. Our district does pay for premium access. So once you sign in with your at WSDR4.org account, you're going to be taken right in to we video. And now we're ready to go ahead and get started editing a video. So across the top here, you'll see that we're in our dashboard right now, and we'll have our button to create new. If you've never created a video before, you likely have a big create new button right in this open area. Create new is going to take us into a video edit and you're going to see that it's looking for you to put your video inside of a project. That's why they say give your video a home up here. So you can create a new project or you can select one of the projects that you already have started. Think of, think of projects as your binder where you might have a couple video edits going, you might be collaborating with someone else who has access into that binder or into that project folder. We're going to click done and now we're taken right into our video editor. The first thing that I want to point out to you is that I am inside of timeline mode right now. There are two modes that you can go into. So I'm inside of my video editor in WeVideo. My three lines right here are going to show you my whole menu. You'll notice that there are two modes here, storyboard mode and time load mode. Storyboard mode is for very simple video edits where you're dropping one item and then the next. But you'll notice when I go to timeline mode, I'm getting several tracks here and there's just more editing space for me to work in with layering. So I'm going to stay in timeline mode right now. There are three main areas inside the workspace. The first main area over here is where you're going to upload your media and you're going to grab your media and drop it onto your tracks. Down here at the bottom you're going to see we have three tracks. We have audio one, video one, and video two. These are the places where we are going to drop our videos, our images, text, music, and other items so that we can layer it and create a video. This big black space here over on the right is our playback area. So as we build our video, we can see how it's looking by pressing play and previewing in this area. So the first thing we need to start with is getting some media in here so that we can create our video. Across the top here, you're going to see a little green um, cloud with an arrow in it, and that's our import media button. When you click it, you're going to get a screen, and here you can drag and drop images or video. You can pull something from your computer. If you want to pull something that's on your drive, we can click our little drive button. If you're on a Chromebook, clicking browse to select is going to take you to your Google Drive anyway, so you want to find some items that you want to upload. Here's a pro tip for you. When you're in here and you're uploading, you can actually select more than one item at once by holding down control to select random items or holding down shift to select all items in between. So that's a little tip is that you can bring in more than one item at a time to upload. Once your items upload, you're ready to use them down in your tracks. And again, you can upload images so you can go out to the internet and find images and save them on your computer or your drive. You can also record with your phone and bring in, or a camera, and bring in video. You can also bring in music files in here. So let's go ahead and start bringing down some images so that we can work on creating our video. So we're ready to grab some images here. We're going to take them and we are going to drop them on to video one. You're going to notice that it turns green, meaning I am okay to drop it on video one, video two turns red on audio because we're working with an image right now. We are going to drop it on video one because video one is going to be the foundation of our video. So anything we put on video two is going to overlay on top of video one. So video two is a good place to put some text if you want a title, but again, video one is our foundation. By default, when we drop it on here, we're going to see that that video clip is going to play for five seconds. So by default, that panda picture is going to play on our screen for five seconds. I can make that play for longer or shorter by selecting my panda image down here on my track. And then you'll notice as my cursor comes to the edge, 
I can click and drag it to trim it or to make it play for longer. So if I wanted to play for eight seconds, I can drag it to the right, or if I want it less, I can trim in. Another item to look at here is anything that you bring down onto your track, you have the ability to edit that further. So when I select that panda image, you're gonna see that I have a pencil icon here. I can also double click to open up that edit screen. So I'm gonna click the pencil icon, and here you're gonna see I have the ability to do some things to that image. I can rotate it if it's flipped the wrong way, I can flip it. The button that I like the most is this fit to screen button. When I click the fit to screen button, it's going to fill out that frame with the picture of the panda. My scale button allows me to zoom in or out. I can always grab my image and move it around on the screen as well to get it how I want to position it. Up across the top here, our next tab over is our animation screen. This allows us to do a Ken Burns fading effect so I can pan across the image to have it have a little bit of movement to it. So two things to look at here, a start position for our image and an end position for our image. So let's say I want to start zoomed out on the panda and I want it to end really zoomed in on the panda's face. I can always preview it down here by pressing my play button. So I can see for however many seconds I've told that clip to play, from start to finish, it is going to move. This is a great place to pan across a map, to zoom in and zoom out, go left to right, so it adds a little interest to your image. There are a couple more options across the top here if I need to edit any color. And then the last one, key, color keying, is where I could do a green screen effect. So I could use my dropper to drop that green in the background and make it transparent. Then I can put another background behind it. When I'm done editing, I'm going to click Done Edit. Now you're going to see here, if I drag my playhead, which is this little blue line with the top, and click play on my playback screen, it's going to go ahead and play what I have of my video so far. So I'm going to continue going down here and grabbing images to put on my track. So I'll just grab a few here. Again, I can double click or click once and click the pencil to edit those to make them fill the screen. I can also grab the edge to make them play for longer if I want. So same deal if I had a video clip. So let me scroll down here and grab a video clip that I have already on here. So same idea with videos, um, with making them go for shorter or longer. But with a video, you may also find the need to cut certain parts of that video. So here you'll notice that this is a video clip I have here. And if I want to cut out a section of that video clip, I put the playhead, I have my, my video clip here selected, I put the playhead where I want to make the cut, then I'm going to use my scissors icon. I'm going to go ahead and click play again. So maybe I want to remove this section right here, I click the scissors button again. Now I have this section that I can delete. So I can click my delete button or I can grab it and drop it up on my playback area to delete it. Now I can move my two clips back together so that they play without that section in there. Now that we have some items down on to our video one track, let's talk a little bit about titles and some other things we can add to enhance our video. So across the top here, we've been in our media category, but now we're gonna move to text. In text, You'll notice there are three folders here, Motion and More, In Seasons, and Callouts. Motion and More are our titles. What's great about WeVideo is that they've added these motion titles so that our text moves, it fades in and then fades out, or moves in and then moves out in interesting ways. There are main titles, there are also lower thirds, which is great when you are interviewing somebody and you want to give their name and job description, you want that to pop up while they're talking, you can use the lower thirds for that. I'm going to go ahead and grab my primary text here. I want this to play on top of my image of the panda. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it on video two. Remember, as I told you earlier, anything on video two is going to layer on top of video one. So you can see when I press my play button here, my text is going to pop out. It's going to display my title and then it's going to go away. In this folder we also have some simple ones without motion that we can look at in season varies by season so you see they have some New Year's and Christmas ones here um, for the holidays 
And then call outs are great ways for you to uh, put a pointer on a map or circle something or draw attention to something. So now that I have my text here, it's time for me to change that text. I don't want to say primary text. So same idea as we can go in and edit our images down here. We are going to click the pencil button or double click to come in here to change our text. So on this first tab here, the properties tab, is where we can go in and type our text. You'll notice that I have control over the font type, so if I want to change the font, I can also switch it to manual to bump up the size of it. I can also grab this text and move it wherever I want it to play on the screen. Once I'm finished, I click Done Editing, and now we're going to see that our text is going to fly in with our title, and then it's going to go away. I can edit how long this title shows for as well. I can have it fit the whole length of it. Just know that motion titles have to play for a minimum amount of time because they have to fly in and fly out. This specific one has to play for at least four seconds, but I'm going to make it span the entire picture of the panda. Moving across the top here, we also have the ability to add audio so we can add some music to our video. There's free music, sound effects, and with your premium subscription, we also have access to premium music. It's great because these are separated by category with feeling. So if we're looking for a cheerful song here, I can double click to preview it. When I find a song I like, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drop it now on the audio track. You'll see I cannot add it to video one or video two. It has to go to audio because it's an only an audio track. Down here at the bottom, now that we have some music down here, we can uh, edit that music. So just like the video, we can remove parts of it if we want to. We also can grab the edge of it and make it play for less time. That's always a good idea is to make sure that your audio doesn't play longer than your video if it's not supposed to. And another thing to consider with audio, especially if you have voiceover or if you have talking, maybe you've filmed um, with your video or with your phone and you have that on here, you want to make sure that your audio is not overpowering. So we can do a couple things to make sure that the audio is at a good volume. Over here at the left under the audio one track, I can change my overall volume on that audio track. So I can make it uh, at a less volume, as you can hear here, or I can turn it up. But the great thing about how we video sets up its audio is that I have a lot of control over how loud the music is. There is a thick blue line that runs across the top of my audio track here. And with that thick blue line, I can grab the line at any point and adjust the volume. So if there's a point where there's talking and I want that volume to drop, but then no one's talking on this particular clip and I want the music to go up louder, I can edit that right here, which is wonderful. So I have a lot of control over how loud my music is. Moving across the top to our next tab, we now have our transitions tab. And this is where we can bring in a different transition between our different images or different video clips here. So if I find one I like, a simple crossfade or a burn effect, I grab it and I drop it between clips. And then you'll see here when I press play, it's going to do the little fade between them. Standard and additional will give you some additional uh, transitions that you can look at. Finally, our last tab here is our graphics tab. So let's say instead of that panda background, I really want a plain background to put there. So in our backgrounds folder, we have background solids, overlay, and frames. Some of these have a nice little movement to them. I can preview them by just clicking them once. So if I find one that I like, I can grab it, and I'm going to move it down here to my track one. You'll notice this is a good thing to point out. I'm dropping something that is 10 seconds, and there's only a spot for a little under 10 seconds. So I have two options. I can trim to fit, or I can insert and push. I'm going to go ahead and trim it so that it lines up with my title here. And I'm just playing back by pressing my space bar, but I can always go over here and preview it. I can even preview full screen. A couple of other different tools um, to look at in here before we wrap up our quick tutorial. Across the top here, next to our import media button, there is a video or screen recorder. This is a great thing to use if you want to make your own how-to tutorials. You can make them right with WeVideo. The first time you use it, it will ask you to install an extension from the Chrome Web Store. This extension runs in your browser and just gives you options when you're recording. 
What's great about using WeVideo to do screen recordings is that it's put right into your editor so you can make edits to that video clip. The next button over is one that students use often and that's the voiceover. So if you want your students or if you want to record a voiceover to narrate what's going on in your story, you can use this button and record right from your computer. That voiceover will go on its own separate track at the bottom and you can edit the volume of it. You can even cut out parts and you can do multiple voiceover recordings. A couple of other things to look at here. You do have an edit undo and redo button in case you mess up. And in the bottom lower right hand corner, this is one that I always like to point out. This is our magnifying glass. So I can zoom in or zoom out on my track as needed. Sometimes I like to zoom in when I'm really trying to cut just at the perfect moment to make a trim or to make a cut on one of my items on my tracks. Or sometimes I like to zoom out so I can see all of my items at once. Another trick to know about is that I can click and select multiple items at once to move together. So sometimes I want to put something in the middle and I want to move everything that I have to the right of that over to make room for what I want to put in the middle. I can do that simply by clicking, dragging down, selecting, and moving. One final thing to think about, so you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner last saved was one minute ago. It does save automatically, but if you know, notice I've made some changes since last the last minute, so if I want to push a save, I click my three lines here and I can click save. This is all done online through the web. So anywhere you have internet access and you log in, you'll be able to access your Wii video. You can also download the app if you want to edit on the go on your phone. Once my video is finished, I'm going to click the finish button to give my video a name. And then I have two options. I can save it in 480p or 720, which is going to take just a little bit more time. And then I can push right to Wii video, or excuse me, I can push right to YouTube, or I can push right to Google Drive. The thing that I love, I always press the Google Drive button. The thing that I love is I click finish, and in just a moment, it is going to give me a URL where my video will be hosted on Wii Video. This is often the URL that teachers have students turn in to them if it's for a project because it can stream right from WeVideo.com. So there will be a unique URL that pops up in here um, in a moment that I can send out and people can view my video right from WeVideo. So this was a quick tutorial on how to get started with WeVideo. There are also other great tutorials on WeVideo built right into the help section of WeVideo. So we'll hope you give WeVideo a try.